I'm Tess Whitehurst, and today I want to talk to you about the holographic universe. So, have you heard of this concept? This is so exciting. So, uh, so theoretical physicists, like especially Leonard Susskind, talk about now that it, it appears that the universe is a hologram. Okay, so what does that mean? So if you think of a hologram, so so kind of how it's described is that, you know, a two-dimensional, like you think about the hologram on a credit card, but it, it's a two-dimensional thing that appears three-dimensional. And so, but think about this. Think about how, this is, Greg Braden talks about this in The Divine Matrix. So if you if you cut up so take take a credit card he talks about a bookmark those holographic bookmarks but think about a credit card and the hologram so this is how holograms work if you cut them into tiny pieces and then look at one of the pieces under a microscope that one piece will show the entire image so every single tiny particle or piece of a hologram contains the whole image within it, and that's how it appears three-dimensional. So what does that mean for us? So that means that just like we always kind of sense and know, we really are part of everything, but not only that, within our every cell is infinity. So it's like that William Blake line, infinity, we see infinity in a grain of sand. Infinity literally is, or the universe literally is within you, just as you are within the universe. So it sort of is challenging to the way we were raised that supposedly, you know, this kind of cultural idea that we're separate and that, you know, just it really challenges the way that we were, we were taught. But if you really think about it, it's something that is inherent. You know, initially we might think that that's counterintuitive, but really think about this. So when you think about the universe, so you're thinking about infinity or you're thinking about the universe, and I've heard Alan Watts say something like this. Where is it? So where is that? Where is your concept of infinity? It's within you, right? You've never experienced infinity in any way other than through your thoughts and, and your, your, your internal perception within you. And then when you think of you, where are you? Well, you're within infinity, right? So what could possibly be more intuitive? We have this inborn, we all, we know when we say infinity, we say expansion, we say universe, we all have that, that sense. We all agree. Yeah, we can conceive of that. That's something we can all conceive of. Well, why? Well, maybe because it literally <laughs> is within us. And then when we think of where are we? Well, you know, we're, in, we're within infinity. It's actually sort of very intuitive and, and built into us. I mean, you can also think of, like, we've come to now, it's relatively recent that we've realized this, but now we think about DNA and we think about a little tiny piece of DNA containing the code to the whole within it, and that's literally true and has been shown to be a, a working, you know, concept. So why not, why not us? And so then, Think, now just think about this. So, so when you really think about that you contain infinity, everything that is, all that is, literally is contained within your every cell, how powerful are you? How much power do you have access to? So you're, when you evolve, when you are conscious of your interconnection, of your power, how, I, I'm, how powerful is that? So it's not something to be, you know, it's, it's, it's literally irrational to believe that you are powerless from that perspective, which appears to be true. Okay? <laughs> so thanks for letting me talk to you about this. I love it. I, I have felt very inspired by it since I learned about it. Thanks for tuning in. Have a beautiful week. I'm Tess Whitehurst.